Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with a video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be making, it is a mostly one layer-ish card, uh, clearly on the masculine side, um, celebrating the uh, Ramblin' Man, the new release from Honeybee. So I'm using lots of stuff. This is the wood grain background stamp, the flame stencil, the good mix stamp set, and then the Rockstar Sentiments, and then this is the For the Record um, Sentiments, and then their dies. So my whole premise here going into this was I wanted it to look like a above view of a desk. And so I'm going to stamp the record player like as if it was sitting on the desk, and then I am going to add in some stickers and things that maybe it would be decorated with. First things first, when I was doing this, anytime you're using a larger clear stamp, you want to be checking for air bubbles because it can get trapped underneath and then push that photopolymer up, which you can see on my record, that's exactly what happened. I did not check it first, there was an air bubble, and then it pushed it up, it picked up some ink, and then when I stamped my image, it stamped it down. This isn't a big deal for me because I'm going to be coloring this record black, but that's just something in general with large um, photopolymer stamps, clear stamps, you want to make sure that you're checking for that because it's really easy to get the air bubbles trapped in there. So I stamped it twice, then I'm going to go ahead and mask it. Um, this is, it wouldn't have to be a one layer card at all, by no means, but that's just what I enjoy doing. So from there, once that's stamped down, I masked that off, and then I'm going to go, um, this is how I treat all of my stencils. And I just wanted to show you um, with these more intricate edges with the flames. So I'm putting, I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue. Yes, it has to be this glue. It's the only one that I know of that dries repositionable. So even after it's dry, it's still tacky enough that you can um, adhere things temporarily. And what I'm doing is I'm covering the stencil. I do this with all my stencils, but on those little intricate parts, I'm kind of using my finger to like smush it out to the edge so that the stick is still there, um, but it's just not like gobbed up on there. I showed you the Distress Inks that I'm using. I did not end up using the Picked Raspberry. I ended up just using the Candied Apple uh, Carved Pumpkin and Fossilized Amber. Now, since I want this to be a one layer card, I am using some... Um, what is this? This is the post-it note tape. I also use Eclipse. I use both of them. I love both of them. Um, but here, the section that I want marked off in the middle, that's going to be actual desk, isn't even. There's actually less section on top than there is on bottom. And I didn't want the both of the stickers to go right up underneath the record player. So I just trimmed off that other edge. It doesn't matter that one of them is like wonky because I just need that one straight edge. Now, here is where things start to go downhill. You guys know I'll try to leave my mistakes in so that everybody can see them and we can both learn from them. Because I don't start over, so there's always a way to fix it, and I'm going to show you how I did that. So here, the error that I made was I didn't put enough of the stencil um, on the card. You can see it's just like the, the very tips of the stencil. Another thing to keep in mind when you're using... Um, dies like this that have a more intricate edge, that have a more pokey edge, uh, you want to come in from the opposite side. So not the side that has the intricate die cut part. You want to come in from the top edge um, where it's more solid, where the, where the stencil is more solid. So that way you don't bend and pull up those, um, those little delicate pieces. So I did, the, I did yellow to orange to red, and then I'm going to go red to orange to yellow. Now, you're going to see, after I'm done doing this and I remove it, that it doesn't look like flames at all. And it's because of how I positioned the stencil. It doesn't. It just looks like little weird squigglies. Um, oh, before we do that, I, wanted, I knew I wanted to make the background of the sticker black. So I'm actually just, while this is still in place, I'm using a um, EK Success journaling pen. You could use anything. Um, any kind of liner that you have that is Copic safe. Um, not that I did any coloring over this, but so yeah, I guess it doesn't have to be Copic safe. Just basically you want to make sure that it dries quickly so that you there isn't any smearing. But this does not look like flames. This looks like a bunch of weird squiggles. That was my own fault. So going into the next section, I am moving the stencil up higher so that there will be more of the colored parts and it will look more like flames. Then I'm going to go through 
and just do the exact same thing that I did before. I'm coming in again from that top edge where the stencil is more solid. And if you can't do the round, like the usually when you're doing ink blending, you know what I mean? You're going in little circles. If you can't do that, if your stencil won't allow it, that's okay. Just pull it, like swipe it. And then in order to blend, put your um, ink blender down and then just turn it in place once or twice. And that should give you a pretty decent blend. That's usually how I do it. But you want to make sure that you have done the swiping first um, and you don't have a ton of ink on there. Otherwise, you're just going to get a bunch of little circles and it's going to look crazy. So here I'm just going to go back through and do the outlining and then I'm going to go back and fix that first one. So um, flip my stencil back around again. Now you can see the top looks much better. The top looks much more like flames. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to do the same thing over again. I'm just going to go right over top of what I've already done and I am going to re-outline it again, but I'm going to be careful not to outline over the flames that are already there. So it almost creates like a double flame look. And while this wasn't my intention going into it, it definitely looks much better than the tiny little squiggles that I had going on. So I don't have any issues with the way that came out, fixed it, it worked, like that's, it's totally fine. It's two tone, they're two different, you know, tones because obviously you're putting ink over ink, so that's automatically gonna be darker. Then again, like I showed you, or like I told you, I didn't show you, I'm showing you right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to go back in with that pen and I'm just going to be very careful that I don't go over the lines that I've already drawn so it does look like two layers of flames instead of just weird black lines drawn over black lines. Know what I'm saying? I think you know what I'm saying. So my intention here with this card was to, um, you know, make a more masculine card. I struggle with them. I know a lot of other people struggle with them. But this card really, because I mean, at the end of it, um, the sentiment is just for the record you rock. Um, you could use this, you could change the color scheme and, and certainly make it more feminine. If you have somebody in your uh, family who's like, you know, total rock chick, which is awesome, then you could do that. While those masks were still in place, I outlined the squares. And now here's where I've pulled out those other um, images. All of them are from the Good Mix stamp set, except for the music notes. The music notes come from the Rockstar Sentiments. And then I'm just going to turn these into like my own little version of stickers. So you got the little like the rock hands, the lightning bowl, and I'm going to stamp the um, stars a couple of times to make that into its own little square sticker. I toyed around with the idea of making them different shapes, like you know, making one a circle and, and or rounding the edges so that it had, um, you know, everything wasn't square. But the reality of it is, is this card was already really time consuming and I didn't think it would add so much to the card that it would be worth it. So, but that is something for you to definitely consider. Here I have my trimmer and the reason that I'm trimming my um, masking with a trimmer instead of just free cutting it is because I want these stickers to look like stickers. And if they look like stickers, they're going to have perfectly straight edges. So that is what I needed. Uh, that's why I chose to, to do it this way. And then from here, once all the masking is done, um, we're gonna start working on the uh, background of the card. So um, yeah, it's been busy. It's been a busy uh, week. That's just kind of where we're at. Pina is free summer break. Uh, and he is going to um, summer camp because both me and his dad think that's important for him to have still some sort of schedule um, that he that he stays on. So he's going to be doing that. But this week it was just me and him. And when I work um, afternoon shift here, I'm just doing the same thing that I did. I'm outlining those masks to create the edges of um, my stickers. And I'm just making sure that I put the pressure up against the um the masking tape so that way if I do get wonky um it goes on to the mask and not onto my card so that's just something to keep in mind once I have all of this masked everything's all masked I'm going to stamp this background this wood grain background um some people are not comfortable coloring their own wood grain and if in those situations or if it's just an area where it's too much to color um or too much to do your own these types of background stamps are amazing you can cover a whole panel because it is a um 
I think it's five, five and a half by five. Five and a half by six, five and a half by five and a half. It's a perfect square. It's enough to cover a card front. Um, and I am stamping in Distress Oxide. Distress inks are kind of trash for stamping, but Distress Oxide stamp really well. And I wanted something that was going to be easy to clean up, quite honestly. I didn't want to have to spend forever scrubbing my stamp. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the masks. Um, the 3M post-it note ones, it doesn't, it has like a coating so that things don't soak in there, but you can get um, the ink on your fingertips. So just be aware of that. So now onto the Copic coloring. Most of this is pretty simple Copic coloring since they are more graphic style stickers, but there are some shading and we'll talk about that as we, as we get to that. Uh, but anyway, back to, so he's got summer camp coming up. Um, which is exciting. When I work afternoon shift, he comes to me at 6.30 in the morning. So we have just had a early morning week all week long. Nobody's gotten any sleep. Uh, God love him. Uh, God love me as well because I am super tired. Um, I did get some sleep last night, which was which was kind of nice because he was at his uh, dad's house. Um, it was actually his cousin's birthday party. So that was fun. So Thursday, well, first of all, let's talk about, we're just going to generally talk about, this is what story time is going to be, generally discussing the things that we do for our kids, the, the crazy things that we do for our kids. So you may have noticed while we were going through this card making process that I have the world's craziest nails going on at the moment. I was getting ready to paint my nails. Peanut and I were talking. He said, can I pick your nail polish? This is pretty commonplace in my house. And usually I let him do that. Then he tells me that he wants me to create quote unquote, thunderstorm nails. Do you have any idea what that means? Nope, me either. So I was like, well, I will see what I can do to create these thunderstorm nails. So that is what I have. So I basically just treated it like I would a galaxy background, um, like I had my nail polish. And then I added in some clouds and some lightning bolts. They came out wicked cool. I mean, I, I would never have thought to do that, but they actually came out pretty awesome. They almost look like the um, the stickers, what are those called? I don't even remember. C Color, Color Street, I think, uh, that you can just put on your nail and they look uh, amazing, And except for that I painted them. So sometimes when your child makes a suggestion, even though it seems super outlandish, maybe listen to them because you might end up with really cool nail polish. So... Other times, when your child makes a suggestion, don't listen to them. That's the second part of story time. Yes, it is. Um, we went to, so I don't know what you guys have, where you're from. We have a bunch of little, like, fairs. They're like little pop-up fairs, okay? And um, I, Eric was working one of them as a side job. And so I had asked Peanut if he wanted to go up there and also because I love Fair Lemonade. We've had this discussion, you guys. You know this. I Fair Lemonade is where it's at. So Fair Lemonade and Funnel Cake. I once had a lady leave me a comment on YouTube. She didn't know what Funnel Cake was because she wasn't from the U.S. Funnel Cake, Elephant Ears, those types of things are basically just really sweet dough that they drop into a deep fryer and then cover with powdered sugar or cinnamon and sugar. And uh, you can get other toppings, hot fudge, caramel, all kinds of things. It's basically just fried sweet dough, which is not good for you at all, but will totally be delicious. And I love them. So we decided we're going to go to the fair. Um, previously, Eric had uh, suggested to me that maybe I would let him ride the rides, to which I explained to him that that would not be happening. The reason I won't let him ride the rides as the pop-up fair is because of my own personal experience. Now, here in in the U.S., the, the carnival workers, or the also known as carnies, um, sometimes they are... And I don't mean, I don't want to be all, I'm sure that it's not the entirety of them. They're probably very wonderful people. But in my experience, the ones that I have dealt with always um, have warrants. They always have warrants out for their arrest. Like I had, when I was working the one night, I had a guy who, who came in to the lobby and his face is covered in blood. He has no shirt on. He's got on cut off jean shorts. And he came to the window and I was like, how can I help you? Like, do you need an ambulance? Um, for those of you who don't know, 911 dispatcher out of a police station. And he was trying to purchase a pack of cigarettes from me. He thought I was a gas station. He stumbled into the police lobby because he thought I was a gas station. He was trying to buy a pack of cigarettes. 
And then as we, I called the ambulance and the officers came back and talked to him. And then we discovered that um, he had been assaulted. Him and another carnival worker had got into a argument and he had been assaulted. And he, this is no joke, he literally said to the officers, I just want to get my tooth and my wallet and go home. That's, that's, the, that's my real life story. So in my experience with the, this type of setting, um, they, they always have warrants for their arrest. They always are loaded. Um, and this is not just like this one, this one story is just to demonstrate to you my one experience. That's not the only experience that I've ever had. And I'm trying not to generalize because I had a girl who, that I went to high school with who ran off with the carnival and she met her husband and then they moved back here and are raising their kids and he's a wonderful man. So that's just my, my experience with that. So I said, you know, I will not be putting my child on a ride that is set up by mostly drunken people who, um, who are, are criminals. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, but nonetheless, we went to the fair and, um, got our lemonade and our funnel cake and all, and we had a good time and visited and saw some of the other guys that I worked with, um, that were working up there. And then it was time to go home. It was time to go home because mommy had a hair appointment. Okay. Mommy had a hair appointment and we needed to get up out of there because I still needed to take him to my mom's. Now I, I have taken him with me when I do my hair appointments, but I remember from a very young age going with my mother to, to her hair appointments and being bored out of my skull and just being like, when is this going to be over? I just want to go home. So I try not to do that to him if I can. So he had said he wanted to go to Nana and Papa's and my mother graciously was like, yes, I will watch him. Thank you, mom. So we're getting ready to leave. And he says, I want to ride a ride. And I was like, mm, I don't. So let's just go. And so we had this conversation kind of back and forth. And he's like, I just want to ride one ride, mom. One ride, one ride. And I felt like, you know, asking for one ride was not him being unreasonable. Um, but also, if you've never been to this channel before, I don't like heights. I hate them. I know I tell you all the time we shouldn't use the word hate um, and I mean that unless it's extreme circumstances and heights is an extreme circumstance. I start getting sweaty, heart palpitations, feel like I'm going to pass out, like it's all bad. Me and heights, bad mix. We don't, we're, we're, we don't go together. So um, I tried to get him to ride the roller coaster because the dragon roller coaster is not high. Okay, it's just, you know, it's got a couple of little, it's, it's a kid's ride, guys. We're in the parking lot of a college. Um, so I try to get him to do that. And he is like, I want to ride the boat. Now, if you've ever been to any, any amusement park ever, you know the boat is the pirate ship. Okay, and it rocks back and forth and it goes super high. So in addition to my not liking heights, I also get motion sickness. So this is a this is a, a lose lose for me here, okay? But I can't let him ride alone because you know he's my life. So I can't just put my life on this ride alone. Plus he's too little; he's just too little to ride on his own. So I go over there. I buy the tickets. I keep trying to talk him into the roller coaster. He's not having it. He wants to ride the boat. So I resign myself to the fact that I'm going to have to get on this boat where either I am going to vomit immediately upon exiting the boat or I am going to be having a heart attack the entire time I'm on the boat. But he's my child and I love him, so I'm going, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna give it a go. So we get into the boat and he picks the first uh, seat and I was like, nah fam, no. I'm gonna get on this boat, but we're not gonna be the first ones in line here, that's not us. We're, we're middle, we're middle seat people, that's what we are. So we move back and then I the bar comes down and there's like six inches from him to the bar okay he's just a little tiny guy and so I put my I scoot him close to me and I wrap my arm around him and then I put my arm up through his arms to hold the bar so like I got him locked in you know what I'm saying quickly about the card um so I'm adding some shading to the top of this record player and then I'm also adding some shadows to the left of the things that would be sticking up uh to give them a little bit more dimension so I got him locked in, okay? The ride starts and we're swinging. We're swinging back and forth and back and forth. And normally, um, you, I guess, so normally I just kind of steal, when, when there's something happening in my life that I just have to grin and bear it. Like I just steal myself to it, okay? 
and that that's pretty much what is going on here so the the ride's going back and forth and um i am this is no joke i am in deep prayer with the lord okay that's that's just where i'm at i'm having a come to jesus meeting the the lord and i are having a, a very serious we're in communion together me and the lord me trying to survive this ride and it's lasting forever forever back and forth and getting higher and higher and so in the beginning of the ride he was like laughing you know peanuts like laughing and i was like well at least he's having a good time because i'm pretty sure that i've just shaved five years off my life um so as then finally it comes to a stop thank you jesus um and i'm like okay i survived it and then you know how you do when you're you know you're trying to your kids having a good time or whatever and it, maybe it's not something that you want to do you, you put on your mom voice and i'm like did you have fun buddy did you like it was it a good time and he looks at me and he goes <laughs> he goes no i was scared the whole time and I was like, so was I. Why did you make us ride this? <laughs> so meanwhile, Eric is standing on the sidelines taking pictures of me. Just, I mean, we're taking pictures of both of us. There's one picture where Peanut looks terrified. I have my eyes closed. And, um, you know, because I told you I'm, I'm, having, I'm having some conversation with Jesus. And, um he I, I posted the picture on instagram because it was so funny the just it was so comical uh so yeah so some suggestions your kids have do that some suggestions your kids have don't don't get on the boat don't ride the pirate boat that's my that's my recommendation to you so back to the card here you can see i am filling in this entire record and i'm doing it from left to right don't do that because i want i did it because i wanted you to see the lines that it creates when I tell you when we're coloring that you want to go with the shape of the object, that is so important because you can see those lines. And because you can see the lines, it can change the way that your coloring looks. So here I'm getting um, progressively darker as we go toward the inside. Um, so I'm leaving like a halo of the, the previous color, but every time I'm going in the circles. The reason I'm going in the circles is because a record is circular so even though you're not necessarily going to be able to um there isn't i guess shading or that it's not on purpose but there is going to be lighter and darker tones and so you will reinforce that vision of it being a round object by coloring it in a circle just like with a flower petal or a leaf, by following along those lines, um, you know, the shape that's already there, you're going to make it look more realistic. So once that is done, I did get a little bit of gray on the inside, like label part. So I'm just going in with my lightest color to kind of clean that up. I'm going to add some highlights to the record because they are shiny. And I'm using that with a white gel pen. I'm not putting down a ton of pressure so that way it kind of skips. I'm going to add some white highlights to um, the needle and then some of the buttons. Um, also, I didn't mention it because I was in the middle of story time, but that needle where it's sitting above, you can see when I put in the shadow for that, I put it slightly to the left so that it would look like the needle was above everything else. I'm not really going to add a ton of shadows um, to the desk part of it because the stickers wouldn't really create them. Only the record player would. So again, I'm going bottom left because I'm coloring as if my light source was in the top right. Um, and this is just going to give it that much more dimension and make it look as if the record player is standing up from off the desk. When I was doing this, I did get um, a little bit haphazard with my darker brown and color that onto my record player. Don't worry, I'm gonna go back in. I'm just gonna fix that up with my lightest gray marker after I'm done blending all of these out. Um, that's one way, because I don't wanna go in with the colorless blender and remove all of that color, but because the C1 is so light, I can just go in there and push the brown back um, and it will still work. After that, I did outline everything with my EK Success journaling pen because that, that I like a bold black outline and that is what I like to do. Um, so I did go through and do all of that. And then the last thing, oh, you know, we're not there yet. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Um, for my sentiment, I did some heat embossing and there's a bunch of different sentiments I really like in here because you could use them. You know, you could make this type of card for a teenager who's into music or, um, you know, 
dad, grandpa, who, you know, totally loves um, or is in a band or loves instruments. But these have just um, really good ones, even for a friend. So, like, Hope Your Birthday is a Hit, uh, You Make My Heart Sing, uh, the one I used, which is just for the record, You Rock, um, You Spin Me Around Like a Record, You're Number One on My Charts. And it's got, you know, brother, dad, grandpa, friend. You could certainly combine these with other stamp sets for, you know, sister, you know, mom, things like that. Uh, but I just think that it's just super cool and it's really versatile because depending upon the color scheme that you use, these types of images can be used for anyone. Um, you know, you usually you're not going to put like flowers on a masculine card, but these could be masculine or feminine. And I love that because, you know, we all work hard for our money. You know what I'm saying? So here I'm using uh, white embossing powder on black. I stamped in Versamark. I'm just cleaning that up. I'm going to heat this up until it is all um, smooth and looking absolutely fancy. I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine and um, with its uh, matching die and then I'm going to pop this up on some foam uh, just to complete the card. And then the last thing that I did, and some of you are going to have mixed feelings about it and I'm okay with that, was I put, um, I can't remember if I used the tonic or the zig they're basically interchangeable for me at this point the clear glitter I did put that on the stars and then on the flames because like back in the 80s 70s and 80s like they did they had glitter they, glitter was on everything you know that was not uncommon for them to be holographic or whatever and so I thought it was a added touch but if you think that your dude isn't going to love the glitter then you can skip it that's no big deal but that's it that's the whole card so thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video bye